Hi, this is Trey Pastor. As promised in my vlog, I went to see two movies today. The first movie I'm going to be reviewing is Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. That's my ticket stub. I saw it in IMAX 3D uh, this morning at 10 o'clock. Um, first, like I said, I'm not that for me. You know, Harry Potter movies I know, but Fantastic Beasts, I never read that book. I never read the Harry Potter books, but I've seen a few of the movies and stuff, so I'm familiar, somewhat familiar with the world, but not an expert by any means. So, but I saw the trails for this and I was interested in seeing this. And this story takes place in 1926. And this is pretty Harry Potter, specifically about 70 years prior to the Harry Potter movies, I, I think, I believe. And I know they're going to make a bunch of sequels to this. Uh, I think the schedule, at least, to make that, uh, I guess, depending on how much money this movie makes. Um, anyway, this takes place in 1926. And it's basically this stars uh, <laughs> Eddie Remain, Colin Farrell, Catherine Watterson. Uh, Samantha Morton is in this, uh, Ezra Miller, and basically it's the story of, uh, one guy, Newt, uh, Scadamander, who's basically, in the, in the beginning of the movie, he comes, he's coming on his way to New York, basically on a stopover, and he's getting ready to write a book about, you know, Fantastic Beasts, and, you know, hence the title, Fantastic Beasts, and where to find them, but of course he runs into a, a character named, uh, Jacob, and, the, you know, the suitcase, which has this magical beast in it, gets misplaced and hence starts our adventure. Um, like I said, I, um, I'm not that familiar with, you know, the whole story, but this story I, I really like a lot because basically this adventure kicks off in, again, 1926 New York. And you have this character played by uh, Eddie Romain, a new scam man that who's, who acts sort of shy and he has his creatures and stuff that he, you know, he wants to protect and he's there to write a book. And of course, in the midst of this world, witches are kind of underground and they're trying to keep themselves hidden and away from, you know, muggles, which are, you know, humans, you know, or non, you know, non-magical people. They're trying to keep their world hidden. But of course, that all goes to hell when his, his case gets misplaced and his creatures get loose. Okay. And hence the story. Uh, I really like this uh, story a lot. It had a nice sense of humor. I love the... The design of it, the whole 1926 world looked fantastic, and it looked beautiful. I saw again. I saw it in IMAX 3D. It was absolutely 3D was fantastic. IMAX is great to see movies in, and IMAX is fantastic. And this story again had a good mix of humor, magical stuff, and so like I said, basically you get the, uh, the character of um, of Newt. He has to kind of team up with Jacob, the guy. He kind of runs into him, and you know, there's a switch with the bag with their luggage and he basically has to track him down and then he gets involved with Catherine Watterson's character who works for the wizard, you know, the underground wizard world. And she's, you know, keeping track of them and, and basically has to help him get his creatures back. And of course, at the same time, you have this, this whole magical human versus magical world going on at the same time. And a lot of different things going on at the same time. And I really, really enjoyed it. Again, Ezra Miller, uh, I thought was really good in this movie. He, his part, you know, he plays like this, you know, like the son of a, a, a woman that's preaching against wizards and stuff. And he's shy and timid and often gets beaten by her and stuff. And he, of course, is uh, basically all alone in the world, except for uh, he has a friend named Graves, played by Ka Colin Farrell, who actually works for the wizard, for, who actually is trying to get information from him. And like I said, this story is complex you see a whole bunch of fantastical creatures Eddie Remain I thought was fantastic is this this guy who's who's shy but he has a, he has a real good strong sense of conviction and stuff and and believes in wizards and not he doesn't want to be hidden and I really liked his character a lot and I liked uh Catherine Waters and his Tina the you know the agent who's basically trying to uh to prove to the wizards you know that she's worthy and stuff who's you know she's been demoted as the movie begins and stuff and she's really you know I like the character, and plus the guy who plays Jacob, 
the actor who plays Jacob, or Kowalski, I thought he was really good. Uh, Dan Fogel, who's basically a human, a muggle, drugged into this world. I thought he was fantastic. He had good comic timing. And I liked the uh, the actors who played against him. Uh, Mary Lou's, uh, excuse me, Tina's, Catherine Morrison's, the actor, I forgot her name, who plays the sister, who's like a psychic. And, and they kind of hit it off, you know, and it's just great to see them four together. And I just thought this movie had a lot of great visuals, interesting stories, and I can see where it could go with sequels and stuff. And this is, the, I think, the first uh, screenplay, I think, that, uh, um, the, uh, what's her name, that, uh, who created this world, uh, I forgot her name right now, I can't think of her name, who created the world. Uh, this is the first um, screenplay, uh, I guess. And like I said, the movie, you know, it's a little long, you know, and stuff, and you got John Boyd now. I think John Boyd's character is sort of wasted in this movie. You know, this part is not big or anything. I think kind of, you know, you get an actor like that, you kind of don't want to waste him. Uh, but I think he's his part, unless he's going to have a bigger part in the sequels. Uh, uh, J.K. Rowling, that's her name. I'm sorry, I was drawing a blank on her name. J.K. Rowling, this is her first, I think, screenplay, I think, for this movie. And like I said, it was a little long, but I still liked it and really enjoyed it. I liked the whole world and stuff. And I'm interested to see where it's going to go in the sequels. So overall, like I said, I got a good mix of humor, fantastical visuals, and stuff. Good sense of humor. I like the characters. Okay, and the yeah, you know, the 3D was fantastic. Um, so I'm going to give this movie Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. I'm going to give it an eight out of ten. I really enjoyed it, and I definitely recommend you go see it. Such so as see it in 3D and IMAX. It's fantastic to see the whole world on the big screen in 3D. It looks absolutely fantastic, and I can't wait to see the sequel. You know, the sequel. I'll be definitely watching, checking out the sequels. So I'm gonna give it an eight out of ten. Definitely recommend it. Okay, um, let me know what you think. If you've seen Fantastic Beasts and where to find them, what do you think of it? Feel free to leave comments down below. And if you like this review, please hit the subscribe button down below. And this is Trey Faster saying so long. Take care.